Welcome to another episode of Taboo Talk, featuring your very own pastor, me, Lady Charmaine Day. Today's episode is guaranteed to be full of sensitive, intimate, natural conversations rarely talked about in the Christian community. So are you ready for your spiritual consultation? Great, let's begin. How are you doing, beautiful? I know you are wonderful, happy, peaceful wonderful and together because those are all adjectives i would use to describe you you simply are wonderful well put together peaceful and so loving and kind to this world you take time to support others to help other people and to make people feel good and very few people do that today so let me give you a round of applause for being so good yay Keep up the good work because you make God look great. God works through people and he's working through you to make this world a better place. I have a few announcements for beginning the show. If you haven't already, please download onto your Android or your iPhone, the Lady Charmaine Day app. This app is my free gift to you for being a part of the ministry and watching Taboo Talk. When you download Lady Charmaine Day app, You get to listen to Taboo Talk radio show, to see Taboo Talk virtual show, to read my blog, to call me with a prayer request, and there's a a tip calculator and a QR scanner for your convenience. So please download the Lady Charmaine Day app today. And second, please, when you have a chance, visit www.ladycharmaineday.com. There you can read my blog, see up-to-date pictures and videos and audio, and you can also visit the store. At the store, you can make a purchase. It's through your purchases I'm able to continue my ministry. And my ministry is done online through Taboo Talk Virtual Show, through my app, my website, and social media. So if you're following me through one of those mediums, I consider you part of the ministry, and I'm praying for you all the time. And when you make a purchase, it enables me to continue to do this ministry. So thank you so much. And my last announcement for the beginning of the show is to say thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. Taboo Talk is success only because of you. And you make this show great. So thank you. I prayed for you to watch and you're watching. So thank you for answering my prayers. God bless you. Well, today we are in for a treat. We have a living legend coming to back to Taboo Talk. Remember Shamara Ray? Yes, Shamara Ray was on radio, but we were on radio. And now she joins us. She makes her debut appearance on virtual. And let me tell you about Shamara Ray. Shamara Ray loves affair when books began as a child. And by the time she reached high school, her enjoyment of reading developed into a passion for writing. At Syracuse University, Shamara's writing grew deeper and richer as she explored different styles in studio classes. That's when a dream began to form. It wasn't until years later when Shamara was commuting daily to Manhattan, where she created education and training programs for corporate executives, that her dream began to make shape. During her commute, Shamara devoured countless novels by authors like Zora Neale Horston, Eric Jerome Dickey, Stephen King, Terry McMillan, Anne Rice, and John Grisham. It wasn't just an escape from the medium of the commute, it became an inspiration. She was inspired to write her own novels and tell her own stories. That first book, Recipe for Love, married her love of writing with her passion for cooking and created a story that celebrates both worlds. The novel was published by Strawberry Books and printed on Simon & Schuster. Recipe for Love received critical acclaim and established her as an author to watch. Fans look forward to our new next book, Close Quarters. Shamara plans to continue telling stories people can relate to and identify with and writing novels that people want to read, including her titles, You Might Just Get Burned, 
Rituals for Love, and Cater to You. She's currently working on her next novel. Help me help you welcome this sensation, Shamara Ray. Hello, beautiful. How are you? Hi, Charmaine. Thank you for the introduction. You're way too kind, but thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here and to see you again. It's a pleasure having you, Shamara. How are you feeling? I am doing, you know, we are living in some crazy times, but I'm Hello. doing well and feeling good. So, yes. Well, Shamara, I asked you what topic did you want to talk about today? <laughs> and you said you want to talk about balancing your passion with this crisis. So yeah. first, for people who don't know what passion is, what yeah. is a passion? Well, you know, obviously passion, it varies for everyone. It's mm -hmm. not the same, but it's something that drives you deep within. You know, that feeling you get something you love, something that you can't do without, something you want to do regularly. Mm -hmm. That's what passion is, that driving force within. And it can manifest in so many different ways. You like know, whether art, music, writing for me, cooking for me. It depends on where, for my brother lately fishing, he's been fishing a lot. So, you know, it really depends, but it's that driving force within you that really motivates you to do something and, and sometimes express yourself creatively. Good. What are some barriers to people becoming, to having their passion implemented? You know what? It depends. And I think now more than ever, if you look at what's going on in the world, you know, there could be so many barriers. I know for myself, you know, I was on deadline for a book for a very long time and work was preventing me from, you know, uh, manifesting my passion, um, family, um, sometimes just getting caught up in things that you shouldn't be doing, you know, watching TV, talking too much on the phone. Um, it really depends, you know, stressors, you know, we're living in some times where people are losing loved ones and, you know, losing their jobs. So sometimes you might not prioritize, you know, your passion and living your passion. But I think the opposite of that is living with that within your passion and fulfilling your passion can really help you get through some of those challenging times. So the barriers are immense. Yes. So what are some ways that people can manage this crisis and manage their passion? So, you know, I think first you have to kind of do a self-assessment, you know, kind of figure out where you are on any given day. I don't know about you, but I know for me, a lot of times where you ask me, how am I doing? And I said, I'm doing, you know, we're used to giving that rote answer, you know, how are you? I'm fine. I'm okay. But I think if we start our day, just taking a minute to kind of self-assess, um, do that check-in with yourself to see where you are emotionally, um, where you are mentally, um, spiritually, physically, you know, I know we're still young, but sometimes you might have a few aches in the morning, you know, just kind of <laughs> assessing, you know, where you are, right? Um, and then being able to say, what do I need? You know, what do I need to get through this day to communicate with others, to, you know, do my job? You know, sometimes it's living that passion to help you, you know, have that outlet, you know, to kind of help you be able to navigate through some of those issues and some of those challenges. For me, I can take some of those things and incorporate it in my stories. Um, mm. You know, my character might be dealing with some of the things that people I know, I'm not going to say me, people I know are dealing with, you know, so I think some of the ways to work through and overcome some of those barriers is to first identify, you know, what it is that's, you know, impacting you and then kind of work through it that way. Got you. Got you. All right. This is Taboo Talk. I have a question. Oh, okay, <laughs> hold on a second. Yes, let me pin you. Gina, this is Gina from Costa Rica. Gina, you have a question? Yeah, I just have a question. What do you do when people around you are negative about what you're doing, what you're up to? So that is a great question. So I have for years, um, and I'm going to put it in the context of when I'm in the, the process of creating or in the process of writing. Um, and I just had this conversation with a friend, like I go underground. I say I'm going underground, which kind of means, you know, hey, I'm off the grid a little bit. Um, I might not be as available as I usually am. Um, I'm pretty outspoken and pretty vocal most of the time, um, but I'm big on energy. So if I'm speaking with a friend or, you know, a family member, 
and the vibe and the energy is not quite right or they're being a little bit negative, you just got to kind of excuse myself from the conversation or I'll say, hey, I'm in a creative space right now. So I kind of just need to take a minute to, you know, do me and focus on my art and my craft. Um, but I'm really big on saying where I am. So I wouldn't say, Gina, your negativity is, you know, X, Y, and Z. I would just kind of say, hey, I'm trying to stay, stay in this creative space. So, you know, let me get back to my writing or, you know, let me focus on, you know, what it is I'm doing. Um, I just try to remove myself from the negative energy. And if they're a good friend <laughs> or family member, at some later point, I might kind of address some of the negative energy or issues, but usually not in that moment if it's disrupting the space that I'm in. Excellent. Shamara, this is Tab Blue Talks. I have a question for you. Yes. Okay. Do you <laughs> think someone who doesn't like themselves or love themselves can have passion? So that's an interesting question. Um, I think everyone could have passion. Um, I think the level of like or love you have for yourself directs that passion. Yeah. Um, so, um, to, to take the first part of that question, I think loving ourselves is essential. It's easier said than done sometimes, right? Um, but I think it's something that, you know, people, if you don't already do it or wasn't instilled in, in you at an early age, it's something that you have to learn, you know, within yourself, how to do it, um, how to recognize, you know, where you may be lacking or deficient in, you know, loving the things about yourself that you should love, you know, not being your harshest critic at all times. Um, looking at those things within yourself that maybe you should change um, and figure out how you can do that. Um, I think once you kind of come to the realization of who you are, um, who you want to be, who you want others to see you as and start to appreciate yourself for the good um, and working on, working on the bad, um, I think that kind of shapes maybe how you're directing the things that you're finding passion in. Because obviously, you know, think about somebody who might not love themselves. They might be focusing their attention on the wrong things at the wrong times um, mm. and not in a positive way. So it's not that I don't think someone who doesn't love themselves can have passion. It's just a matter of where they're directing that energy and what that, as I mentioned earlier, that, you know, that deep, that deep feeling within your soul, where you're letting that guide you. So yes, to your question, someone can have passion. It's just a matter of how are they really, you know, exhibiting that and, and demonstrating that. Gotcha. And also, um, I had another question for you, Shamara. If someone has a lot of unforgiveness in their heart, a lot of grudges, a lot of yeah. anger, a lot of yeah. animosity, yeah. and they have negative energy themselves, mm -hmm. is it possible for them to do something good when they're so negative inside, internally? Um, so I think everybody has good in them right so with that being said mm -hmm. yes they could do some good um but i think when you're dealing with um having that that spirit within you that negative spirit um more than likely that's probably leading your actions um i think that if we start to look at uh who we are um, and really try to, I guess, internalize where some of these negative feelings are coming from, these negative actions, you know, how can we actually identify or who do you have in your, your circle who can help you kind of recognize those things and work past those things? I think you'll obviously be in a better place. I, again, I think everybody has some good in them. I think anybody can do good. It's a matter of whether they will and if that's their leading spirit, you know, I think that's, that's really the question. And then if it's not, then who around them can kind of let them know that and help them, you know, kind of live a better life, you know, and, and recognize that maybe things that maybe they don't even recognize in themselves, there are some things that they can work on and change. Okay. So we talked about barriers to passion. How do you get your passion? For example, in 2008, I was passionate about internet radio. But nobody at the time knew about it. Nobody heard about it. They were like, what are you talking about? Right. And so I knew I wanted to do it. But how do you get your passion out from idea in your yeah. brain to yeah. the world? You know, that's a great question because I feel like sometimes we don't take the time to really figure out what it is we love to do or like, you know, sometimes it's a fleeting thought, you mm -hmm. know, like, 
oh, you know, this this week, I, you know, I saw something that I wanted to try. So I tried it. It wasn't so great. And now I'm over it. <laughs> right. So I think we have those moments of quiet time, you know, where it's just you and whatever it is that you let's say you're a singer, you know, you're singing those notes in the shower. Let's say that, you know, you're a writer, you're writing in your journal. I think when you have those moments and you figure out that that's something that's driving you and you start to make time for it and you start to dedicate more time for it, I think that's when you know you've really hit on a passion. And there's nothing wrong with passions changing. You know, we change every year. You know, whoever you were 10 years ago, five years ago, five minutes ago may not be the same. So it's okay if your passions change along with you. But I think in order to find out what your passion is, it's really probably in those those quiet moments when you're doing whatever it is that you enjoy and you find yourself returning to it and making time for it in the midst of your family driving you crazy, (laughs) demands. Or are you feeling like, you know, it's not something, maybe it's a, a financial, you know, barrier. So maybe it's something you can't afford, but it's something that, you know, you want to return to uh, every week, every month. Then maybe that's when you know you hit on your passion and it's something that you should explore and want to cultivate. Okay. And so how, one second, Gina, I'll get to you one second. And so how do you manage your passion and this crisis? Right. You know, I think it goes back to what I was mentioning with checking in and doing some self-assessment. Um, I think the reality is, you know, we're living in some times that we've never seen before. You know, I think all of us have probably had loss. Um, you know, as I mentioned, some people may be, you know, losing their work, um, homes. So, you know, you might not be thinking about, you know, I'm going to use myself as an example. You might not be thinking about sitting down to write romance. You know, that might not be top of mind. You might, I'm, you know, I might not have been in that space. Um, but during these challenging times, during the pandemic, you know, you can watch so much news. You can hear so many people talking about so many things that, you know, are going wrong, that it begins to take a toll on your spirit and your energy. Yeah. And at some point you have to disconnect. And in those moments when you disconnect, maybe you spend a few minutes doing something to you know, take your mind away from what's going on, regardless as to whether it's a few minutes or an hour, or if it's one day or, you know, one week, just being able to kind of disconnect for a minute and really try to redirect your energy. Because, you know, if we let it, you know, that negative energy will really pull you down and there's no escaping what's going on in the world, but we can still find a moment to kind of find some quiet time and work on something that gives us a little joy to make us want to continue to do something other than listen to what's going on in the news and the negative things that we're hearing. Amen. And Gina, you had a question for Shamar? I do. What are um, some of the obstacles you had to overcome to become a writer? Yeah, so um, that's a great question, Gina. Thank you. Um, So initially, I so I'm just going to go back a little further than that. (laughs) So I loved reading as a child. Like, you know, if you talk to my mother, she will tell you I pestered her to death, you know, bringing book after book for her to read to me. Um, And through the years, you know, that changed into me writing. And, you know, as Charmaine read in my bio, taking writing courses and writing studios and just always writing something. Um, And I, I remember when I first decided I wanted to write a novel. I, you know, I had a, a friend, um, my friend's dad, he also would write and we talked to each other about writing and I'd always have excuses to why I didn't start or when I was going to start. And, you know, he would always say, oh, did you start that book? Or, you know, what's, what's preventing you from writing today? And I say, oh, you know, I want to get a laser printer first. Or and he's like, oh, well, I have an extra laser printer. Here it is. You know, or I'd say, oh, I'm on the train commuting. And by the time I get home, I'm too tired. So it was like, you know, I I found, I probably created most obstacles and barriers myself (laughs) in the early days Um, until I finally did it, as I was saying to Charmaine a few minutes ago. So I finally did it and it became something that I loved and wanted to return to every single day. Now, um, five books later, um, looking to write in a few different genres I've created some new obstacles for myself. Like, oh, before I start writing a new genre, I have to do some research on this. So I've got to, you know, figure out what data I want to, you know, I, I'm creating new obstacles. So I think most of my obstacles are internal that I'm creating myself. 
Um, but I think, you know, for a lot of folks, you know, it could be a matter of whatever, you know, their passion is or um, just having some fear into doing something new um, could be uh, monetary. You know, you never know what the, the financial commitment is. Um, timing, there are a lot of things. But for me, I think I probably create most of the obstacles myself. Just, you know, I don't want to say procrastinating, but could be procrastinating. <laughs> Gina, do you have a follow-up question before I move on? No. Okay. Thank you, Shamara. And Shamara, I have a question for you. Why is learning to say no important? Yes. Okay. So I will tell you, that's something I still struggle with. Um, I think, you know, for me, uh, I generally need to probably take a step back to check my bandwidth. You know, do I have you know, the bandwidth to assist <laughs> with whatever the request may be. Um, is it something I want to do? Mm -hmm. um, should I be doing this? Is there something else I need to be doing? I think a lot of times, you know, we don't want to disappoint folks. Um, we don't want to, um, you know, just put ourselves in a situation where we know we, I'm, I'm the biggest, you know, me talking about procrastinating on writing, I'm usually supposed to be writing. So, you know, <laughs> being able to say no is important. I just think that, you know, it's something I, it's something I work on regularly. You know, you want to be there and be present for others and be able to assist when necessary, but you also have to be able to take a minute um, to disconnect for yourself, um, to make sure that you are taking care of yourself and doing the things that you want to do and the things that you should be doing as well. So, I mean, just saying no can be something that's, um, again, it's something I'm working on, something I uh, am, am saying more often these days, but it is, it is a little bit of a struggle, but it's important, obviously, for your own peace of mind, so. Oh, good. And for those people who are tuning into this show, looking for that inspiration from you to get their passion going, what do you say to that person who is ready to go what inspirational words do you have for them? You know what? So honestly, I think the first thing when trying to put your passion into action is to really take a minute to figure out what that passion is, right? As I mentioned a little bit earlier, you know, sometimes we have these things that, you know, we love doing for a week or two and then, you know, it flies by the wayside. So I think really taking a moment to figure out what it is that you want to do, what passion is driving you, what, what do you want to give time to, you know, with time being so short and limited for so many people, first starting there, what is it, you know, what's your passion, what motivates you, what moves you, um, discovering that, and then making time to actually put it into action, put it into motion. I think really kind of, and I think if you think about passion on a different level, passion, your passion usually brings you joy, yeah. right? So really taking a moment to say, what's going to bring me joy? What am I going to make time for that's going to bring me happiness for me and those around me? So I think starting there, what is it that's going to bring you that joy? Great, great. And I have a question for you again. Yes. This is Taboo Talk. So why aren't people living out their passions. This is yeah. a taboo talk question because I don't understand it. <laughs> if you take the time, if you figure it out, why aren't people doing it? You know, that's a great question. And I think ultimately at the most basic level is because we don't prioritize usually ourselves mm. and those things that we should do as an escape. Um, and I'm gonna keep referring to the times we're in now. You know, if you're a traveler, you know, if you like me, like to go out and, and dine and have dinner, like those are things that you're probably not doing, right? So at a bare minimum, you might be doing not doing the things that you do on a social level. But I think that we don't prioritize sometimes the most basic things to do for ourselves. So, you know, if you're not living your passion, you're probably focused on the kids and work and, you know, housework and all those things before really thinking that you should, you know, devote adequate time to, again, finding some of that inner peace. You know, I think ultimately when you're living your passion, you're really trying to find some inner peace for yourself and something that's going to make you happy, as I just said. So I don't think we prioritize that, you know, not enough. 
Mm. Okay. And for those people who are saying, all right, I hear you. <laughs> I know I need to prioritize, but people keep running all over me and all my <laughs> dream and all my, my, my space. So how important is boundary management when it comes to passion? Yeah. So um, great question. I don't think you can manage your boundaries until you really figure out what it is that you can, you're capable of doing, what you're available for doing other, for other people, um, what you're willing to do for other people. I think once you kind of determine that, then you can kind of work on how you can make sure that setting the, the right boundaries will allow you to do what you need to do for yourself. So I think boundary management really starts with being able to assess again your needs, your needs first. You know, what do I need to do? I, let's say I need a, uh, an hour or two to write every day. Um, then I can tell whomever, okay, so from noon to two, I need you to not call me or not to come into this room. You know, then you can set the, the proper boundaries because if you don't know exactly what you need to do for you and how you need to do it, then you, it's kind of hard to kind of let other people know what your boundaries are. So probably just assessing again, you know, where you need to take that time for yourself and then being able to let other people know as well. Like, okay, listen, so I'm gonna be doing X, Y, and Z. Don't call me. Hey, I'm not cooking dinner today. So fend for yourself. So I think really being able to know what it is exactly that you need and then being able to relay that to other people to set those boundaries. I hear you. And you know what, Shamara, you're a daughter, you're a sister, you're a friend, you're a worker, you're a writer, you're a motivational speaker. You have so many roles that you're managing and juggling. How do you juggle all of that and still make time for your passion? Well, I'm always rebalancing and reassessing. So whatever gets priority today may not be a priority tomorrow. You know, I'm always trying to figure out you know, what needs to be done when, um, for whom, by whom, how can I make it happen? Will I be able to make it happen? When you can expect it to happen? So I'm always rebalancing. And I think being aware of the demands on you, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, your bandwidth, that helps. You know, that helps me find time to write when I want to write cook, not so much these days, but cook what I want to cook, but really being able to rebalance and reassess, you know, not everything gets the same level of priority. It depends on the day and it depends on what my list looks like on any given day. Mm, I hear that. Now, you know what, Shamara? Final question. For those people who say, I want to, I want to follow my passion, but I'm scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you say to that person who says, to that person who's scared to follow their dreams. Yeah. Um, for someone who is who wants to find their passion or follow their passion and they're scared, um, I would start with probably the basics. We can't let fear rule us, mm -hmm. right? Um, and start small. Tackle, you don't, sometimes we look at the overall, overarching, you know, whatever it is we're trying to achieve. Look at it in parts. Can, what can you do today? What can you do tomorrow? What can you do the next day? Um, look for somebody who, you know, is it working within that space, um, a creative in the same space. Find a mentor. Find someone who can help suggest and guide you through getting into whatever it is you're trying to get into or start or work within. Um, but I think we have to stop, you know, letting fear guide us. You know, life is short. We don't know how long we're here. Um, every day is precious. Starting the day, knowing that, being thankful that, you know, you woke up and you have the opportunity to do something new, try something new. I mean, what do you have to lose? And I think maybe it's just a fresh approach on how we look at things and how we tackle things, but not letting fear be our motivating factor, letting that discovery of getting into something new be the motivating factor. I love that, tomorrow. I love that. And Shamara, I wanted to give you the opportunity to give us your final thoughts and comments on managing passion with this crisis. And before I do that, Gina, did you have a question? Okay, so yeah, 
your final thoughts of managing passion with Christ. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, again, I'm going to go back to kind of reassessing your wellness, you know, where you are on any given day, you know, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know, starting there. Um, you know, don't be so keen and quick to say I'm fine if you're not. Um, I think you should stay in touch with your support network. Um, talk to your family and your friends, you know, do a check-in, a sanity check with them as well. Um, take some me time, you know, that's a big thing for me. You know, as I mentioned, I go off the grid sometimes, I go underground just for quiet time, just to be alone with my own thoughts um, and to be able to just clear out whatever energies don't belong to me. Um, and again, thinking about what brings you joy and taking that and using that to drive your passion. You know, I think a lot of times we, as I mentioned, we focus on so many things that we're going through on a day to day. You know, we work and then after work, we're thinking about work. And then as soon as you wake up, you're already angry about work, like <laughs> trying to disconnect from some of those thoughts just to find a little bit of joy, whatever that is, you know, just to, to try to find what it is that's going to bring you joy and then putting that in action in your own life, you know, to find some pleasure. Um, and I think uh, finally, repeating those things every day, you know, not just, hey, you know, this week, I'm gonna kind of do that self assessment, but every day do that self assessment every day, if you're a lover of music, turn on some music at some point, five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it is, really trying to incorporate that passion into your life on a daily basis, it should be just as natural as it is for you to do everything else that you you think is a responsibility, make time for that joy and that passion too. I love it. Okay. Shamara, can you please share with the listening audience your URLs where we can reach you? Yes, thank you. Everything is Shamara Ray. So my website is shamararay.com. Um, you can reach me on IG at Shamara Ray, um, Facebook Shamara Ray. So it's all the same. Excellent. Do you have a website? Yes, it's uh, shamararay.com. <laughs> I love it, shamararay.com. <laughs> all right. And Shamara, uh, yes. if people want to write you, can they send you an email? Yes, it's actually email at shamararay.com. So yes, it's, it's pretty, it's all, you can't forget it. <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything is shamararay.com. So email at shamararay.com or you can tweet me or you can um, hit me up on IG as well. Okay, Shamara, why did you want to talk about this subject today? Please let us know. You know, honestly, I think so many of us are in, um, we're dealing with things we haven't dealt with before, you know, um, and I know for so many of us, the things we're experiencing have been all consuming to the point where we haven't let um, things that bring us joy in life, you know, be front and center, you know, either because we feel like we shouldn't, we can't, you know, there's so many things that are going on that are so serious and grave. And I feel like that energy at some point is, as I mentioned, it can take over you. And I think that being able to find a moment to do something good for yourself, something enjoyable for yourself can really shift your energy and help you, you know, uh, mentally, physically, emotionally um, on an, every level. So something that I wanted to talk about just because I know that's something I experienced, you know, as I mentioned, I was trying to write a book you know, in the midst of this. And I just wasn't in that space to write a book, you know, or write about romance and love, you know, until I had to really walk it back and think, you know, these things still exist. They're still prevalent. These are things that, you know, I write about, I enjoy writing. And I found that in re-engaging in my passion really lifted my spirits as well. So I hope it, hope everyone else can have a similar experience when they start to re re-experience or at least find a new passion. Yes. Well, Shamar, I tell you, this was such an enlightening and helpful show because there's so many people out there who want to do something with their passion, but a lot of people are scared, didn't know how, didn't know what it entails or what it means. So you coming on today and explaining what passion is, how to make time for your passion, how to set up boundaries, how to how to do a self-assessment, all that was beautiful and very helpful to the Taboo Talk listener. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's been wonderful. Oh, wow. Is there anything else you would like to say before I end the show? 
just thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Um, I always enjoy our conversations. Oh, uh, it's always a pleasure for me having you on the show. And I have to ask you, will you come back again? Absolutely. Oh, uh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> well, we have come to the end of this show. This show was done to help you reach your passions, your goals, your dreams, so that you can feel happy and joy, the happiness and joy that God means for you to have. And Taboo Talk exists to help you transform your mind, body, spirit, utilizing the principles of Jesus Christ. Continue seeking God's face in all that you do, even for your passion. Seek God's face for help, assistance, guidance, mercy, favor, and a wonderful life will occur for you. And I promise I will continue to bring subject matter experts like Shamara Ray come on the show to help guide you, lift you up, and to support you on your journey because you are very, very special. Until next time, take care of yourself, stay special, and I wanted to say, Gina, thank you so much for being a part of the show. Gina's coming from us, from Costa Rica. Thank you for adding your questions, your comments. We appreciate you. Thank you. All right. And thank you, listening audience, for, for coming and being a part of the show. You being here, listening, watching, and taking in the information is what makes Taboo Talk a success. Please continue to do so. Well, until next time, take care of yourself. Stay special. Goodbye.